Hey, Hannah Mouse One here. Welcome to another beginner's scratch tutorial. Because a lot of you who are still in school will be on the October half term right now, at least for my fellow Brits, I thought it might be fun for the next five days to release an episode of this tutorial series every single day so you could code along with me as a fun Halloween holiday project. Even if you aren't on school holidays right now, even if you aren't in school, this should be a lot of fun. The project I'll be showing you how to make is called Pumpkin Patch Panic, and the game involves you harvesting pumpkins from a pumpkin patch while combating the hordes of invading zombies, ghosts, and spiders. For part 1 I'll be showing you how to make the player move around the screen, but first I want you to head on down to the description and remix the blank version of the project that is linked there. This will contain all of the art and audio assets but none of the code so that you can code along with me. But once you've done that, let's jump in. Go to the player sprite. The first thing that we're going to do is drag in a when green flag is clicked block from the events tab. This is the block that registers when the player starts the game so we need it if we want anything to run. However we don't want to run our main gameplay loop off of this so we're going to create a new message. Attach a broadcast message 1 block to the green flag script, click on the drop down and make a new message. Call it play. Then drag in a when I receive block and select the new play message. I've separated the player character sprites into the upper body and the legs because it will allow us to have the player hold things without affecting the leg sprites. To get this to display correctly we're going to use clones. We're going to need a new variable. Click onto the variables tab, select make a variable and call it this underscore type. Make sure that you select for this sprite only and click OK. Then add a hide block to the play message received. After this, set this type to body and add a create clone of myself block. Then set this type to legs and create clone of myself. Next we need to get the clones to switch to the correct costume. Drag in a when I start as a clone block to this and attach a show block. Then attach a forever loop. Add an if else function within the loop and drag an equals operator into the condition space. Set the left hand side to be a this type input and set the right hand to say body. In the if portion of the loop, switch costume to body down 1. And in the else portion, switch costume to legs down one. The player will now display on screen. But let's get her moving shall we? For this we're going to need five new variables. So head back to the variables tab. All of these should be for all sprites and call them player x, player y, xvel, yvel and magnitude. Under the when I receive play script set player x to zero and player y to minus 120. Then add a forever loop. Then go back to the when I start as a clone block and in the forever loop add a go to x y block. We want the clones to go to player x, player y. We're now going to make a custom custom block to handle the player movement. Go to the my blocks tab and make a block. Into the namespace type movement velocity and add a number or text input. Call this input velocity. Then add a label and type in friction and then add a friction number or text input. Do the same for x input and y input. Select run without screen refresh and click ok. Run without screen refresh ensures that the entire code block will run in a single frame which is what we want. You'll now see a define block for our movement script so we can start coding in the player's movement. First drag our new movement block into the forever loop under the play message. Set velocity to 2, friction to 5. Then drag a minus operator into both the x and y input spaces. Now go to the sensing tab. To set the x and y inputs we need to understand how boolean variables work. A boolean variable is defined as either true or false. The space key is either pressed true or not pressed false, but this also holds a numerical value. A false boolean will be equal to 0 and a true boolean will be equal to 1. We can use this to set the values for the player's movement. I want to use double W A S D movement. So for X we want it to read key D pressed minus key A pressed. And for Y we want it to read key W pressed minus key S pressed. But if you chose to use say the arrow keys for instance it would be right arrow key pressed minus left arrow key pressed and up arrow key pressed minus down arrow key pressed. Setting these values will now allow us to test the movement script as we write it. So let's write it. In its most simple form all we need is to change player X by X input times velocity and to change player Y by Y input times velocity. However, there are some problems with this method. First, the player will move faster if moving diagonally than if they're moving along the x or y axis, which feels a bit off. And the player also stops very suddenly when the key is released, which again feels off. So let's fix these issues. Let's detach these two blocks for now and instead add a set xvel block and a set yvel block. We want to set xvel to be xvel times friction and yvel to be yvel times friction. That will handle the issue of the sudden stop. Then add a set magnitude block. We want this to calculate how far the player is moving within a single frame. To do this we need some maths. Drag in a square root block and into the input of that an addition. Then drag a multiplication operator into each side of that addition. We want it to read the square root of x input by x input plus y input by y input, which you might recognise as the Pythagorean theorem which is used to calculate the hypotenuse or slopy side of a right angled triangle. Then add an if statement and set the condition to be not magnitude is equal to zero. Within the statement change xvel by x 
input divided by magnitude and change y val by y input divided by magnitude. This is called normalizing the movement vector, which means that the distance that the player will move will be 1, solving the moving faster on diagonals issue. Then after the if statement, we add the player x and player y blocks, but now we want them to read change player x by x val times velocity and player y by y val times velocity. Now we have the player moving around the screen. Let's get the player animated. To do this, create three new variables, all for all sprites. The first should be called costume, the second direction, and the third state. Under when I receive play, set direction to down. Then head back to the define block for movement. Add an if else statement and set the condition to be if magnitude is equal to zero. In the if portion of the statement, set state to idle, else set state to walk. Then add another if else function. For the condition, we want it to read y input is greater than zero. In the if portion, set the direction to up. Drag another if else function into the else portion of the function and for the condition we want y input is less than zero. In this case, we set direction to down. For the else function, we need yet another if else function with the condition x input is greater than zero. And here we'll set direction to right. And else, drag an if function with the condition x input is less than zero, setting direction to left. Now we need to drag in a new when I receive play block and add a forever loop to this. Within this loop, wait 0.2 seconds and then add an if else function. Set the condition to be if state is equal to idle. And within the if portion of the statement, set costume to 1. And in the else function, add another if else function with the condition costume is equal to 4. Within the if portion of the statement, set costume to 1 and else change costume by 1. This script will update the costume 5 times a second. We can now use all of this information to update the costumes for the player clones. Go to the forever loop where the clone switch costume and drag a join operator into each of the switch costume blocks. Type body into the first input block in the if portion, then legs into the first input of the one in the else portion. Then drag join operators into the second input of both. For these, set the first inputs to direction and the second to costume. The player will now animate correctly, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did, it lets me know that this is something you want to see more of, and I'll see you tomorrow with part 2 where we'll be adding in the pumpkins. Bye!